All right, so today we'll talk about optimization. On uh, Wednesday we talked about root finding. Today we'll talk about optimization. This is from Spurs chapter 12. And we're just going to look at sections 1 and 2. So this topic of optimization is actually it's a very big and broad topic in computational statistics or just there's this whole section on mathematical or numeric optimization. And you know, if you go on Wikipedia and you look up optimization, you know, you're going to have a ton of ton of things talking about this. You can take an entire course on optimization. It will be further covered in 102B. At least I cover it a little bit further in 102B. Today we're just going to talk about just some two brief methods for unidimensional optimization. Okay? So in our in our class and today's topic Today will just be unidimensional I guess optimization with an S. Okay. Just optimizing uh, one variable, okay? And the idea is you got some function. And here, x could be 1 or multi-dimensional. And you're just trying to find, you wish to find the value, to find the values of x that ma maximize or minimize function. That's, that's basically it. That's what all of optimization is all about. You've got some function. You want to find the set of values that will give you the highest point or the lowest point. Okay. And now, a lot of times, pretty much all the algorithms we do will find local maximums. Okay. Finding a global maximum requires some knowledge about the entire space of all values, and, and that's a little bit harder to do, uh, at least from an algorithmic perspective. Maybe if you understood the math behind it, you could, you could do it. But, you know, so you always run this risk of, you know, this is the tallest tree I've ever, ever seen, uh, therefore the, tall, you know, the, the tallest tree can grow to this height, right? Um, but, you know, if you went somewhere else, they might have different trees, right? So. In California, we have the redwood forest, and so those I think those are the tallest trees in the world, but I don't know. You know, if you grew up somewhere else, and you're like, well, the tallest tree I've ever seen is this tall, then, then that's going to be kind of your thing. So, but let me just, so let me just give you one application where optimization is very useful, okay? Okay, and that would be maximum likelihood estimation. Are you guys familiar with MLE? Kinda? You guys are giggling over there. Um, so I don't know if that means... I don't, that means I feel like I was supposed to learn this, but I'm not sure if I learned it. Is that what that means? or? Or, or just means I don't, I'm not familiar. Okay. All right. So the idea behind maximum likelihood estimation is you have data, right? You've got some data, and we can call that D. 
And in maximum likelihood estimation, we're saying this data comes from some model, right? Comes from a you know data generating model. And we want to know the parameters that define this data generating model. So, you know, for example, let's say you have a whole bunch of information on the heights of people. Okay, so you get lots of data. And what we can say is that the data that we see is coming from a mixture of two normal distributions. Okay, so we can say, you know, our data Okay, so, you know, normal distribution for the heights of men and the normal distribution for the heights of women, or something like that. We can say that's that's how we're you know seeing all of our data here, and so our model would have five parameters for us to estimate. Okay, what would what would some of these parameters be? Okay, we would have to find the mean for. Uh, the males and the standard deviation for the males. Okay, we'd have to find the mean for the females and the standard deviation for the females. Okay, and then we would have some kind of proportion or mixing parameter. This is kind of the proportion that is male or female. Okay, and I know you know this is a of course, anytime you build a model, it's a simplified version of the world. So it's not, you know, people's heights don't come exactly from the normal distribution and you know there might be deficiencies in our model because we're just saying people are either male or female and that means this obviously means their heights go like this. It's not necessarily the case in the real world, but we're just saying to keep things in a simple mathematical model, this is one way to express it. You know, someone else might just say, "Ah, oh, you know what? When you look at heights the genders don't even play a huge role. You can just have one big model of one normal distribution. Some people might say that too, OK? But you know, if this is the case. All right, and so how does maximum likelihood estimation work, OK? Well, you calculate the probability of each data point, right? So according to your model, you calculate the probability of every data point you have. And then you get the likelihood of the data, which is, you know, assuming each of these observations are independent of each other, the like total likelihood is just the total product of all the probabilities, right? So the likelihood will be the product of all probabilities, assuming independence. And maximum likelihood estimation would be find the set of five parameters that make this likelihood function as large as possible. Okay, so MLE would be MLE. 
and maximize the likelihood. Okay? Because the fact is, is you've observed this data. So if your current parameters say that it's very, very, very unlikely to observe your data, and you've, the fact is that you've observed this data, then there's a good chance that your current parameter, parameters are not a reflection of reality. So you want to adjust your parameters to maximize your likelihood so that it, then you say, oh, well, that explains why the data I have looks the way they do. And that, that's maximum likelihood estimation. Is that OK with everybody, at least conceptually, this concept here? And probably if you took 100B, you had to demonstrate that the you know, maximum likelihood estimate of some randomly sampled values is, and you know, if you're assuming it's coming from a normal distribution, then the maximum likelihood estimate is the sample mean of that thing. And, and you probably had to prove all these things, maybe. You should have. <laughs> Am I bringing back bad memories? OK, so anyway, so that's maximum likelihood estimation. Here we're going to take a numeric approach. We're going to say, ah, I've got some function, and I want to now maximize it. OK, and if I can maximize this, if, I, if I'm able to express the function in terms of the parameters, and I, I'm able to find the parameter that maximizes my likelihood, then that's going to be a good parameter estimate. OK, so anyway, that's, that's kind of the framework that we're thinking about. But here, let's just talk about how do we maximize a function. OK, so let's say we have, so let's, we're first going to talk about Newton's method for optimization. Okay. Whoops. Oh, let, before I go on, I, I want to just say maximization, maximizing a function and minimizing a function, they are, it, they are the same thing. Okay, If you want to, let's say you have some algorithm that's able to give you the minimum of a function. If you want to find the maximum of another function, all you have to do is do negative 1 times the function. And then when you minimize that, that will now give you the maximum. If that makes sense. Here, let, before I, okay. So let me just erase what I wrote. Let me let me just fully describe this. <laughs> All right. So maximizing and minimizing are the same problem. Okay. If we can minimize something, let's say let's say we have an algorithm that can minimize a function. Uh, and now we wish to maximize some, something else. Some function f. OK, so we've got some function like this, right? And we want to find this point. This is a, a, the maximum. OK, all we have to do. Can I, uh, is there a way to flip this? No, there's not. OK. Well, I'm going to just have to, oops, shoot. <laughs> I'm going to just have to free, you know, eyeball and just say, <laughs> all right. So now we just take, um, so if this is f of x, this is going to be negative f of x, and then and we find this spot, the minimum, minimum of negative f of x will be the same as the maximum of 
of f of x, okay? And so, you know, if somebody gave you a sorting algorithm and you can't figure out what to do, you know, what goes on inside of it, and it, you know, sorts it from greatest to le least to greatest or something, and you want to switch the order, okay? One way to do it is just multiply all your numbers by negative 1, run through the sorting algorithm, and then multiply by negative 1 again, and then and that's it, okay? That's a, that's a very simple way. You can always, you know, in R, you can always reverse the vector and things like that, but but that's that. Okay, so maximizing and minimizing are the same problem. So here, anyway, we'll uh, we'll talk about Newton's method. Okay. Do you remember Newton's method for root finding? Okay, how does Newton's method for root finding work? Yeah, so basically, we're just going to say um, I've got some po point here. We're going to take the derivative at this point oops, uh, or find the uh, tangent line at that point. And this brings me to here. And then I'm going to find the tangent line at that point, And that takes me to here. And we go so on and so on, right? So Newton's method for root finding uses the tangent line, OK? to get our next guess. OK, so we have the next point that we're going to use, x of n plus 1. The next iteration is our current guess, x of n. And we're going to subtract off f at x of n divided by f prime at x of n. OK, that's Newton's method for root finding. OK, for optimization, We're going to just use our understanding of calculus and just say, we know that any local min or local max has the derivative at that point equal to 0. So I hope we remember this from calculus. <laughs> OK. So when the derivative at a point is 0, then it's going to be a local min, a local max. It could also be a saddle point. That's true. OK. But we're going to just rely on that fact. So the critical values of a function to find your local mins and local maxes are going to have derivatives equal to 0. So all we do is we're going to apply Newton's method for root finding on the derivative, and that's going to give us where the derivative equals 0, and thus we have found our local mins and local maxes. derivative equals 0, and thus where local mins and local maxes are. OK, and that's, that's basically it for Newton's method for optimization. So we would say, um, we would just say let g of x equal f prime of x. And so using Newton's method, we would say x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus g of x sub n divided by g prime of x of n. Okay, And then if we want to turn this back into, um, into what how it relates to f, we would just say 
Okay, x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus f prime at x of n, and uh, I'm running out of space, divided by f double prime at x of n. And that's it. So this just requires that our function f is twice differentiable. And perhaps that is not a luxury you have. Okay? But if your function is smooth and continuous and twice differentiable, you can use it, use Newton's method to find the mins and maxes by t finding where the derivative is equal to zero. Okay? And technically, all of those other root finding methods can be applied to the derivative and, and be used. So for like maybe you have a function that you can differentiate once, but you can't differentiate it a second time. And in that case, you can use one of the other methods, like the, uh, I don't remember, secant method or, or something, right? So you can use one of the other methods to find the, uh, the root okay, of the derivative. So, so basically, if the derivative equals 0, then, then it works. Okay? And so I've got a little bit of code to kind of demonstrate this. And, uh, and this is, you'll end up seeing this exact same plot. But uh, <laughs> OK, so here I'm going to load up ggplot. I think I put, did I put this up on uh, CCLE? OK, demo code or something. All right, so here I'm just making a function x times x minus 2 times x minus 4. That's going to be our function f. If you take the derivative of f, I get f prime. And that's going to be 3x squared minus 12x plus 8. And I'm going to just um, run a sequence from negative 1 to 5. y is going to be f of x. dy is going to be f prime of x. I'm going to bind all of those together into a data frame. And just plotting the, uh, the function by itself looks like this. And here I'm going to, um, so this is, that's what f is. And if I plot the derivative, it looks like this, OK? So we can see, you know, and this is, you probably saw this in calculus, in your calc class. You know, where there's a local max, we see that's where the derivative crosses 0. And where there is a local min, we see that's also where the derivative crosses 0, OK? OK, and so for Newton's method, all I have to do is um, this I added to the code. But I'm going to just say f double prime is going to be the derivative of f prime. So f double prime is 6x minus 12. Okay, And so let's just start off with some initial point. x0 is 5. And I'm going to just call x0 is x old. And all I'm going to do. is then run a loop. And I'm just using this to update. The new next point that I'm going to use, x new, is x old minus f prime x old divided by f double prime x old. Okay, That's exactly what we said is Newton's method for optimization. Okay, And then we're going to print out what that is. And then we're going to just run it again. So I'm going to take our new value and plug it in and say that's our old value. Okay. And so if I just put this in a for loop, okay, we can see that um, you know, starting at 5, it converges down to 3.154701. Okay? And you know, starting at different, using different starting locations, You know, that's 20 iterations. I probably don't even need that many. OK? You know, here I started a, a little bit closer at 4, and it, and it just converges. If I go the other way, if I start at some place like 2.1, it will also you know, move in that direction. And it converges down to the, uh, the same location. Maybe it needed a few more iterations to get to the, uh, the exact value. Uh, and then if I start over here at like negative 1, all it's doing is it's just root finding on the derivative. Okay, So if I start at negative 1, it's going to get to the closest root, which is going to be right here. And that's going to be the, uh, the local max over here. So let me just I'll do like uh, 16 iterations. Okay. And, oops. 
forgot to uh, change. Okay, and so we can see it, it converges right, right there at around 0.845. So the algorithm itself, very, very, very simple. We're just using the derivative and the double derivative, second derivative. Okay, Newton's method for optimization. All right. Is that okay? Okay, so again, that one requires that the function is twice differentiable. If you don't have that luxury or if you don't know how to calculate the derivative of a function, which often happens, but you're able to calculate values of the function, we can do um, a method called the golden section search. Okay, so what is the uh, golden ratio? So the golden ratio, you know, we use this symbol phi, and it is, it's around uh, 0 0.618. Okay, and the idea is if you've got some kind of rectangle or something. Okay, this is a this is a terrible picture, by the way. All right, the idea is you know you've got if you cut off this bit of the square and you've got x over here, then the ratio of the long edge to the short edge that would be one plus x over one is the same as the ratio of the long edge to the short edge in, in this rectangle. Meaning if I, if I take this rectangle and I cut off this square, this rectangle has the same proportions as the original rectangle. Okay. And, uh, and so this, this gives us some nice, nice properties. This would be, you know, if I do 1 divided by 0 0.618, I get 1.618. Okay. And, uh, and another thing is that if I go from 0 to 1 and I end up at 0 0.618, and I, if I go 1 minus 0 0.618 to, uh, what is that? That's not what I want to do. You know, 0 0.382, you know, point. 382 divided by 0.618 is also 0.618. Okay, so this is so that you know the this is the uh, the properties of the golden ratio. Okay, and so we can t use this to our advantage when we're trying to do um, do a little bit of searching here. Okay, if we're searching for a local minimum or local maximum. Okay, so let me just illustrate what we're going to do. Let's say we've got some boundaries, x sub l and x sub right. Okay? And here during and inside this boundary, let me we've got some kind of function here. Let's, okay, so if I say the distance is xr minus xl, okay, I'm going to set up two locations. I've got x1 is going to be xl, x on the left, plus, and it's going to be the golden ratio times this distance. Basically, I'm 61, 62% of the way between XL and XR, and I'm going to call this one X1. So X1 is about 62% of the way between XL and XR. And then X2 is the other one where it's 62% of the way from XR to XL. So X2 will be XR uh, minus the golden ratio times the distance. Is that okay? Okay, and then what I would do is I would calculate the value of f at x2 
and I calculate the value at f at, of f at x1. Okay. And I compare these two. And my picture is not that great, but we can kind of see that f at x2 is a little bit bigger than f at x1. Uh, do, would we agree with that? So we would say f at x2 is greater than f at x1. Okay? And remember, we're trying to find the minimum, right? And what this tells us is that if x1 is smaller, I mean, f at x1 is smaller than f at x2, then the minimum value, the smallest value, has to be to the right of f at x2. Okay? So this means that smaller value, or this means that the minimum value of x2, OK? Because we can't, we're not going to have any, uh, we're not going to have smaller values over here, okay? Because we know there's at least one smaller value to the right of x2. So that means, you know, it could be in between here and here, it could be over here, but we know that the smaller values are not going to be over here. So what we do is we then, we basically take this section and we chop it off. So we just remove okay. and then so for our next iteration what happens is that x2 becomes the new x on the left okay this one remains x on the right okay and because of the golden ratio x1 is now 62% of the way over between x, one, uh, x on the right and the new and this location. Okay, Because of the golden ratio, this location is 62% of the way over, 61.8% of the way over between xr and x2, or our now our new xl. So this becomes the new x2. Okay, And then I just have to find, calculate my new x1, okay, and then we would repeat the process. Okay? So because, because of the golden ratio, I only have to calculate one new value at each iteration. Okay? I only have to calculate one new value at each iteration, and I can reuse the previous values. I don't have to recalculate a whole bunch of new stuff. Okay? And then so the next iteration, I would then take this part, so this is so let me uh, relabel all of this. So this is now x on the left, this is now x2, this is now x1, and this is x on the right. And I calculate f at x1. I can reuse, reuse the old value, and I have f at x2. Okay? And what we see is that, oh, um, f at x1 is now greater than f at x2. Okay? And so this means the minimum must be to the left of uh, x1. Okay, and so I would chop this right here, and we would throw away all of this. 
Okay, and again, so this becomes our new x on the right. This remains x on the left. Okay, this will become the new x1, and then I would calculate. Uh, an x, the new x2, okay? And we repeat this over and over again until, uh, you know, just removing kind of this section at a time until we get to the, uh, the minimum value. All right. Does that kind of make sense, what's going on? Yes, no? So, so we just plug in our x2 into the function, OK? So every time you know, we have a function, we plug in our value into the function, and we evaluate wh which one's bigger, f at x1 or f at x2. So we've kind of implemented this right here, OK? So here I'm going to create a function called golden, and, uh, and we create the value golden ratio. So golden ratio is you know 0 0.618. So if I do one divided by the golden ratio, I get 1.618034. And then if I do one minus the golden ratio, I get that 0.38. And if I divide that, so this is this is the property of the golden ratio that makes everything work, is that if I do 0 0.381966, and I divide that by the golden ratio, I get the golden ratio back again, OK? And that's what makes all of this work. OK, so our function, the, for we calculate our golden ratio. We're going to calculate where x1 and x2 are. Again, lower plus golden ratio times the distance between the upper and lower limits, OK? And then x2 is the upper limit minus golden ratio times that difference. Okay, and so the arrangement for points is lower, x2, x1, and the upper. We're going to evaluate, just plug in uh, x1 and x2 into f and get our values f1 and f2. And then if you look at this code, it's just doing exactly what the thing is saying. Okay, If f2 is greater than f1, then the minimum is to the right of x2, and we just rename all of our points. Uh, our current x2 becomes our new lower limit. x1 becomes the new x2. F, F1 becomes the new F2. I don't have to recalculate that. Um, and I calculate a new X1, and I calculate a new F of X1. Okay? And I don't have to reassign X on the right, because that's going to remain what it is. Okay? On the other hand, everything else is on the other side. So you know, if it's, if it's the other way, you just reassign them accordingly. And that's it. Okay? And you just. Uh, continue repeating this process until the difference between your upper and lower limit is, um, is, is less than some tolerance value. Okay? Oh, this should be less than a absolute value. Upper minus lower is, is smaller than some tolerance. Oh, I think I have that backwards in the code posted online. <laughs> I'll, I'll just double check. <laughs> I just caught this mistake here. Okay, and then so this is uh, this is the golden golden ratio uh, function, and and so let's say we want to plug in, you know, our original function f, which is this. We'll see if we get the same same values back. Okay, so this is uh, we're just going to do golden. And, uh, and we're trying to optimize this blue function. Uh, it calculates minimums, so we'll say, um, I already forgot what, how the arguments go. f, the lower and the upper bound. So, so we're going to take function f. Our lower bound will be 2. Maybe our upper bound will be 5. And I think, hang on. Is it greater than tolerance? Absolute of the. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, yes. So, so it's 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 working, and we can just change our tolerance to be, uh, you know, ten to the minus 
6 or something. Okay, or minus 7, we can just see. Uh, you know, at, at, at a certain point, it, it runs out, okay? So that's f. Uh, and if we wanted to maximize it, we could do the same thing, and we would do uh, negative f, and we would do golden on the minus f, and we would get the, the values up here that maximize it, okay? So that's the, uh, the golden section search. So I've posted a homework four, okay? The homework four, you got some root finding methods and you're gonna do some graphing with ggplot2 uh, and a few things. Uh, take a look. The last part is on coordinate descent. I'll talk about that briefly on Monday, um, but it shouldn't be too, too terrible, okay? All right, we'll see you guys. Have a good weekend.